Do you ever wonder what happens if you spray some of this on some of this in a wall like that and then have too much current going through the wire? Well, I always have, so let's find out. So I'm going to prepare our wall section for the foam test. And I'm going to use this plain old great stuff foam. It's maybe not. That's why you wear doggles. That's better. Now I should point out there are different types of foam. For large areas you hire people with a truck and a couple of huge vats of two-part foam that essentially dries instantly. And I highly recommend it. It's about the same price as buying the rigid um, foam insulation, but much less work. This stuff seems to rely on exposure to air to dry, so you really have to do it in layers for any thick area. And what I wanted to do was test an area covering a wire and also test where it goes through holes in the 2x4s. You're supposed to be allowed to do this, but I'm sure it's even more sensitive to overcurrent than just going through the holes in the 2x4s. I think what we'll do is, just like the other one, we'll leave a little area of the wire exposed so we can see what's going on. There, so we'll leave that solidify and do another test. So this is actually a week later after putting on the spray foam because it's been, well, rainy all week. And one thing that did happen, and I should have anticipated this, is the spray foam, which was great stuff, bulged out. And it actually took the wire with it somewhat. And I'm not sure if it stretched and damaged the wire. And I was actually wondering if that was a bad thing, but in the end, well, this sort of situation is probably quite realistic for a real-world application. What isn't realistic is that you'd, well, use a bottle of spray foam to fill in such a large area like this, but what you often will see is that it will be used to fill in, and hopefully you can see past me, the holes that the wire is going through. And once again, you're probably noticing little jumps in the video because I'm having to stop every time a car or truck goes by and edit out that section of video. Hopefully it won't be too annoying. Anyway, I think it's time to start the test. I'm just turning up the current and what we'll do is we'll leave it at 15 amps for maybe 15 minutes just to sort of simulate a normal maxed out circuit. I should really explain what this experiment is all about for those of you who haven't seen the previous videos. And what we're doing is we're looking at what happens to standard home wiring, in this case 14.2, when it's passing through some somewhat typical wall situations, a bunch of spray foam, some 2x4s, and some open areas, and we're passing current through it. Now, normally, this sort of wire is rated for around 15 amps and no more. And what we really want to see is if a bunch of things go wrong, somebody plugs in too many devices, a circuit breaker doesn't trip or the wrong circuit breaker is installed, what's going to happen to the wire? And of course at some point it's going to get so hot from the current flowing through it that bad things happen. And to have a nice safety margin in all our house wiring what we would hope is bad things only start happening when we're at many times the maximum rated current of this wire. So, it's actually been about 25 minutes since we started passing 15 amps through the wire. Now, I wanted to measure the temperatures. The unfortunate thing is the sunlight is creating quite a surface temperature around here. And I think the only thing we can hope to do is maybe see if there's any indication that the wire is warmer in here. 
and in fact I can certainly feel it. So no idea if the IR thermometer will work but let's see. So for reference the outside here is about anywhere from well around 33 Celsius we'll say. And then if I move it around here I saw about 53 Celsius. So there's probably around a 20 degrees Celsius rise in the temperature on the wire and I guess that would translate to about 40 degrees in Fahrenheit. And I think what we'll do is crank it up to perhaps 30 amps. So let's see what happens. All right, another 20 to 25 minutes later and off camera I did try and get the temperature through the little window in here and I also actually shaded it so I wasn't getting too much direct reflection from the sun interfering and I measured at one point about 30 degrees Celsius here which should really be around the well not good things happening point of this wire. And if we look over here, and I did this once before, I got around 60 Celsius on the wire that's in the exposed air. So as one would expect, the wire in the foam is much hotter than the wire that is being air cooled and it's probably even hotter inside the foam and quite truthfully for me at these sorts of temperatures and I can sort of feel the plastic getting spongy and it's really too hot to touch this is really too close for comfort um, so really a good example why these wires are quite conservatively rated because it is getting so hot I think what we'll do is just up at another 10 amps and I wouldn't at all be surprised if things started happening around here. So 10 minutes later from when we cranked it up to 40 amps and I noticed that the voltage here suddenly dropped from about 1.5 volts to somewhere around 0.9 and the current well it's sort of gone up to 41 amps but the welder is essentially a constant current source or very crudely anyway and so what that means is because the voltage has dropped we have a short and we would expect that the short has probably occurred somewhere in here this cable is hot but I think it's probably cooling down now. I'm even seeing some browning in here and I see a little bit of smoke coming out. I'm gonna see if any of this is molten. No, doesn't appear to be. In fact, it still seems pretty solid even if it is discolored. And Oh yeah, that's very loose and hot. Um, we'll see if we can get a temperature. Hundred and three, hundred and seven, hundred and eleven, hundred and ten, hundred and twelve. So this is now over a hundred Celsius. We're seeing the same sort of voltage. So since this is good and hot. My guess is our short is somewhere here. Who knows, it might be even in our 2x4. And there is a bit of a plasticky smell, but not nearly like the other tests. I'm guessing that the foam is somehow confining it. And just to confirm, the wire over here has cooled down dramatically. Um, it was originally so hot I could barely touch it. Now it's very comfortable so clearly we have a short somewhere in here but 
we do know current is still passing through because we're getting about 0.8 volts across the system with 41 amps and um, this is still very hot so I think what we're gonna do is just leave it for another 10 or 15 minutes and maybe at that point we'll crank up the current some more and see if the short gets more interesting. So another 15 minutes later and the only thing that's suffering from the heat is the voltmeter um, which is really not happy with the heat of the sunlight which is why I'm periodically covering it with my um, welding gloves but the bottom line is it's still somewhere around 0.8 of a volt or so at that current this is blistering hot I don't think its temperature has changed too much it would be really nice to know what the temperature is inside I'm sort of yeah I'm showing 97 right now but it all depends on exactly how you aim it um, I do have a thermocouple now unfortunately it came after I put the foam in and I figured well I better do the experiment anyway or I'll never get around to it I think the thing to do since we're not really getting any further change here and we've actually already had our short is let's try cranking up the current from 40 amps to maybe 60 amps or so since we might as well just sort of see if this foam is likely to at some point melt and catch fire or if it's actually better than I thought and quite truthfully right now I'm quite impressed and surprised how well it has stood up to the heat from the wire so here we go up to 60 amps let's see what happens oh and we're seeing smoke coming out our hole let's zoom in even more oh and we're also getting smoke coming out of our wire through the 2x4 Now, of course, in a real scenario, the circuit breaker would have shut down this a long time ago, or if it hadn't, and there was a direct short in the wire, there would be such a large current going through that it would have vaporized a whole bunch of things. So this is a very contrived situation, but it is very interesting to see what happens with all the foam. And I think we now may have a short somewhere over here because there is less activity here yeah this isn't well all this is still very hot so who knows um when our wire is disintegrating completely there so really it's hard to say what's happening so one thing i'm noticing now is bits of brown in the foam over here and I don't know if we can get enough of it off to see anything but oh yes look at that so in here we can see the foam absolutely disintegrating so I think what was happening is the outer layer of the foam was really providing a vapor barrier type effect whereas the inside of the foam Oh, it's actually quite loose now and um, certainly charred in there so quite interesting when you look at how the foam has changed and how how opening it has certainly caused a reaction over here but I think the bottom line is that initially anyway it looks like the foam has somewhat contained the fire and or the charring and the fumes until I broke it open like that so I'm not sure 
if that is a good thing in the sense that it outweighs the fact that the wire buried in the foam ended up getting hotter so much faster and probably melting at a considerably lower current than, well, the stuff in free air. I'm also quite impressed that this hasn't actually caught fire. Now, in the end, that might be a moot point because these fumes are very vile and luckily they're blowing upwards and away from me. And in fact, I'm going to move away if they come towards me. But maybe let's sort of try and open this some more and just see what's inside. So I'm just going to dig away at this and let's see what we can see. So certainly a lot of charring right around the conductors and the charring is actually a lot like in the fiberglass where the charring really disintegrated the insulation around the wires but it sort of retained its form somewhat and I think that's why it might have taken this so long to short. Um, what you may not be able to see on the video is where the foam is disintegrating, it looks moist. Now, I'm not going to stick my finger in that and find out if it is, but it wouldn't be surprising if it was some sort of a, you know, wettish breakdown product of the plastic. So there you have it. That's what happens when you put a considerable overcurrent through the 14-2 wire inside a area that you have carefully insulated with foam. Now, the other thing that we don't know is, of course, how this would react to different types of spray foam, including, for instance, the professionally applied two-part foam that is used to cover walls, as I showed you at the beginning of the video, or for that matter, other forms of great stuff like the foam that you use to plug up the holes when you're going through the top plate of a wall to prevent a chimney effect if there ever was a fire. I'm going to do at least one more test like that, and what it is, I want to just put a regular 2x4 through a wall like this and see what happens with overcurrents. And the reason for that is, so far this experiment and the previous one in the wall, all the interesting stuff happened in the insulation. Surprise, surprise. And it would really be quite interesting to see what happens with massive overcurrents on a wire in the wall with nothing around it and really being more representative of an inside wall. So, see you next time.